Welcome to Consistency Breeds Growth Radio. I am your host, Justin Romare. Our incredible guest and myself talk about the cutting edge science and consistency necessary to reach your weight loss, wellness, and performance goals. If you want more information about working with us one-on-one or in a gym setting, head over to consistencybreedsgrowth.com or email us at consistencybreedsgrowth at gmail.com. We will also put links in the show notes. Enjoy the podcast. Science. What's up, team? We're back with another episode of CBG Radio. I just want to send you a quick reminder to join our community Facebook page. Why am I asking you to join this page? Well, let me tell you. Every month, we run free monthly nutrition, mini nutrition challenges. And me and my coaches are giving tips along the way to try to improve these these health markers, uh, water challenges. All these things are totally free for you guys. You get a load of information, and it's just good to bring this value. So if you want to join that community Facebook page, just go to www.facebook.com slash groups slash CBG Nutrition Tribe. Okay, we'll see you guys there. Today, I have a really cool podcast about protein. When it comes to protein, it's been demonized in a variety of different ways and for a variety of different reasons. Um, So to start, proteins in our diet are really the building blocks of life. And even in our muscles and in our DNA, they're the building blocks of life, right? And every living cell uses proteins for structural and functional purposes. And one of the first myths that I'd like to sort of debunk is that you don't need protein for breakfast, right? So I'm not even sure where this myth came from, but while you're sleeping, your body is sort of in a state of fasting, right? And protein's not delivered to your muscles. And getting a high protein breakfast is a great way to replenish your, your, you know, your muscles protein balance, right? So, but a lot of people in the morning, since there aren't a lot of protein options, if you're not an egg lover or eater, people will resort to high carbohydrate, a high carbohydrate meal for the morning. So like bagels and toast, things like that. Um, You can also have like other dairy products like Greek yogurt and uh, cheese. So all these things have a good protein content in them and it's good to get enough protein and for breakfast, right? The other myth is that all protein is created equally. Um, So a complete protein versus an incomplete protein. So a complete protein contains all nine amino amino acids, essential amino acids, and the right amounts, right, to support that growth and function and development. Whereas an incomplete protein provides only some of these building blocks and needs to be combined with other sources of protein throughout the day. So sources like meat from animal products, animal foods like meat, fish, poultry, eggs, and dairy contain complete protein, right? While most plant proteins, except for soy, are incomplete, right? So I just want to state though, however, eating a variety of vegetable protein sources in a day, like grains and legumes, can provide enough complete protein. And that plant-based protein foods like legumes and whole grains offer ample dietary fiber and vitamins and minerals and other beneficial phytonutrients. So it's not that we should be neglecting some of those other foods. It's just to be aware that animal proteins and animal products are more likely to give you that complete amino acid profile and are therefore complete sources of protein, right? So what is the takeaway from this myth? The takeaway is that what really works is that you should try to include at least one source of high quality protein in each meal. Okay, and if you follow a plant-based diet, which is also a possibility, you want to mix things up by eating different kind of vegetable proteins throughout the day because not one of them has the complete amino acid profile, but it could be that a mixture of them do, right? So you want to switch this up throughout the day. Number three is that your age doesn't matter when it comes to your protein needs, okay? This couldn't be further from the truth. Right, So age, in fact, does matter when it comes to your protein needs. And a lot of experts agree, and it's been shown in the scientific literature, that protein needs actually increase with aging and illness, right? 
where, you know, there are some, uh, you know, studies out there, especially back in the early 2000s, that mentioned that protein uh, was caused an increase of coronary uh, heart disease, right? And, uh, you know, it's very important when you're looking at some of these studies to realize that it's about the uh, quality of some of the beef and the other meats that you're actually intaking and then also the total caloric intake that you're taking in when you're talking about diseases such as coronary heart disease. Protein on its own, however, doesn't cause a lot of these illnesses and diseases that we know of that are very prevalent now in the United States. So muscle loss in general is a part of the natural aging process. So you know, uh, and calcium as well, like osteoporosis and things like that. And, you know, this happens more and more as we age, right? And muscle loss in general, as part of that aging process for some older adults can, they can lose up to 8% of muscle mass each decade, which if you think about it, it's pretty substantial, right? And this is starting typically, uh, depending on your genetics around age 40. Okay. So this can take a serious toll on some of your strength metrics and goals and energy levels, right? Making things that were once seem very easy, like picking up uh, a 30 pound box off the floor, etc. It might make those things seem a little bit more difficult, right? Which is very, very fr frustrating. On top of that, as you're, as you age, your body becomes less efficient at utilizing protein. So if you want to reap the benefits of protein, which as we mentioned before, is really the building blocks of the muscle mass that you have, you're going to want to make sure that you're getting enough of it. Another myth that really is important for overall protein intake is that activity level doesn't impact protein needs. So as you can see here, a lot of these myths are around specific goals, personalized nutrition, uh, and that everyone sort of should have a different intake around what their protein needs are. And, you know, depending on who you are and what your activity level is, right, we all have different activity levels. You definitely need to have different protein requirements in your diet, right? So when it comes to protein, there isn't really a one size fit all. As you age, right, as we mentioned, it impacts protein needs. And so does the activity that you're doing, right? So that's myth four. And I would say as in turn, in, in regards to the last myth, uh, it has everything to do with uh, kidney damage, right? A lot of people say that, oh, you eat too high protein diet can cause kidney damage. This is true for people that have kidney diseases, right? Any disease associated with the kidneys, if you're eating too much protein, this could further exacerbate the kidney disease that they have. Um, so the kidneys are... A super remarkable organ, right? So some people say that kidneys, they need to work really hard to clear metabolites of protein from your body. So they say, oh, adding more protein in your diet may increase their workload. But actually, this increase is quite insignificant compared to the immense amount of work that your kidneys already do, right? So it, it's just in conclusion, for myth five, it's there's really little to no evidence that protein intake harms kidney function in people who don't have kidney disease. I mean, it's just that simple, right? Right. Uh, so there are a lot of different benefits of protein, and it's important to get enough in throughout the day. My recommendation to start off is around 0.8 grams per pound of body weight. So for some, someone that weighs 200 pounds, that's around 160 uh, grams of protein per day, right? And track it some kind of way, right? Uh, typically, a, a fist, a, uh, a fist, or a, a, let's just say a palm. A palm's about four ounces of protein, which is about 25 grams. So uh, utilize that as sort of a portion size for yourself uh, to understand how much protein you you actually need. So, Sorry. hey, I hope you guys enjoyed these Sorry. tips today. All about protein, five minutes that can help get you on the right track. Uh, to understanding protein a little better and then incorporating the right amount for you and your goals. Don't forget to join our Facebook page. Our full episode will be coming out Thursday on this topic. This is our micro podcast. Yeah, love you guys. Appreciate all of the uh, the listeners on here. And if you have any questions, find us at consistencybreedsgrowth.com and I'll chat with you all soon. Later team.